Hey y'all, my name is Luke Crisoni, amateur radio call sign Kilo 5 Alpha Lima Lima, K5 ALO. And today I'll be explaining my, uh, the setup I use to receive satellite weather imagery and forecast from the GOES geostationary satellites using some simple equipment. This process does not rely on internet, cellular signal service, or other ground communications infrastructure that could fail during a small natural disaster. Here I have a Panasonic Toughbook running Windows 10, connecting to an SDR receiver. The SDR receiver is hooked to a length of coax. This one happens to be LMR 400. And it's connected to a low noise amplifier and bandpass filter combination made specifically for the application of receiving these images. This is connected to a satellite dish with a small dipole antenna tuned to a frequency of 1694 MHz. We're going to start off with a computer and work our way to the dish. This computer is the brains of operation and does all the image processing and gathers the incoming data from the SDR receiver. I suggest using a computer that has more than an Intel Core i3 or equivalent and 8 gigabits of RAM. I also suggest having a large hard drive because this data takes a good bit of storage space. If I had this setup running for an entire year, it would take a 1 terabyte hard drive to store all this data on, not including the MWIN messages. I can't recommend any specs as far as hard drives go because it all depends on how much you want to operate your setup. As I said, it depends on if you want weather data, the M1 reports, and the imagery. What I have here is a Panasonic Toughbook CF31 Mark V. This rogue computer came with an Intel i5 5300 processor, 8 gigabits of RAM, and a 500 gig hard drive running Windows 10 Professional. You can find these on eBay and Amazon for under $1,000 used. There are many types of software defined radios on the market, from a cheap $20 dongle off of eBay or Amazon, all the way up to a $3,000 win radio model. Whichever model you get, just make sure to look at the features and make sure it could go up to an approximate frequency of 1,694 MHz. The one I have decided to purchase here is an AirSpy R2 SDR receiver, which can cover 8 to 10 MHz of spectrum at a time, at a sampling rate of 10 mega samples per second. I also chose this SDR because the, I used the software made by the same company, which is AirSpy. So it works hand in hand with the radio, but we'll get to that later. Just like the SDR, there are many low noise amplifiers and bandpass filters around. Like the name implies, it's a low noise amplifier with a bandpass filter behind it, taking out the RF you don't want and leaving the RF you do want. These do require power, so make sure you have an SDR with a bias T, or you can provide power with a micro USB cable from your computer or other power source. This one here is made by Newelec, and you can find them on Amazon for $40 to $50. This is exactly what is in the box behind the dish, just in a housing that I have built with BNC connectors for Quick Connect. The dish is one of the most important parts of the setup. You can get dishes around 4 foot all the way up to an Arecibo observatory size if you wanted to. Just make sure if you buy a dish, find its focal point and builds a cantina for it tuned to 1694 MHz. This one specifically came in a kit made by Newelec and has a gain of about 21 dBi. I hope in the future I could build a permanently mounted 10 foot dish for this application. That's it for the hardware, let's go look at the software. There are many manufacturers of SDR software as well. There's GNU Radio, SDR Sharp, SDR Plus Plus, and many more. The one I'm using here is SDR Sharp and it comes with a program called Spot Server. I first use SDR Sharp to rough tune the signal. As you can see here, I'm getting a 5 dB gain or a 5 dB signal over the noise floor. That's pretty much my average, so I'll go ahead and close the software. I will then find Spot Server and load that up. Now, Spot Server puts all the information from the SDR into an onboard server that can transfer all the data to the processing software. Now, you want to remember this IP here. This IP address will be specific to your computer, your setup. Mine happens to be 127.0.0.1 and port 5556. 
X-Ray Decoder built by USA SATCOM and another X-Ray Decoder program built by fellow amateur radio operator Philip Karn, KA9Q, are the only decoders ready to go for Windows operating systems. They use different SDR softwares, so make sure you get the right one by the instructions they provide. Links to the software are listed in the video description. The decoding software I'm using today is built by USA SATCOM, which is for now a one-time software payment, a little over $100, depending on what programs you want to purchase with the decoder. After I open the extra decoder folder provided by USA SATCOM, I will open my X-Ray Decoder as well as the X-Ray File Manager. Now after starting Spy Server and opening the X-Ray Decoder and the File Manager, I can fine tune the dish using the Dish Align feature. So I'm going to go to Align, I'm going to click Align. And I'm going to start the demodulation. Gain set to 21. Now this will take a small minute here. <clears throat> so please be patient with your system. Now you can see my system has put the gain all the way up to 21, our maximum, for the small dish I have. And I'm getting a 95-ish, 96-ish 96 percent signal strength. I'm going to close the dish line feature. And what that dish align feature does is help you fine tune where your dish is pointed to. I'm going to clear my counters. I'm going to start processing. And I'm going to start my ingester. Now, if I want an MWIN, I'd highlight this MWIN right here process, monitor. As you can see, I have weather data already highlighted, as well as goes. You could also use this program to get the GK2A images. That's not what I wanted to do. All right. Now it's just to play the waiting game and to get a few images. Any images that you get could be found in your XRIT folders going to output and going here. I will include at the end of the video images I have received as well as weather data. Well there you go. Now you're on your way to receiving weather imagery and information from a geostationary satellite 30,000 kilometers away from Earth's surface. More thorough instructions are given by USA SATCOM for their x decoder when you download the software. Learn the software thoroughly and you will know how to correct even the smallest of mistakes in lining and receiving images. Good luck on your adventures with amateur radio and software-defined radio. This is K5ALL 73